Hey, good morning. Steve Wiedemann here from Wiedemann Consulting Group here with Hansel and Jeremy. And today we're going to talk about search engine marketing optimization and uh, trying some coffee. Do, Cappuccino, do, Java, do, Jive, do, Mocha, do, Latte, do, Java, do, Jive. I love coffee, I love tea, I love the Java, Java. Coffee. This one's the uh, same place we went to last week. It's called Stereoscope. Last week we had their drip coffee, Correct. which was actually really good. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was great. Was. And this one we're doing uh, just a cappuccino. Cappuccino today. Cool. So we'll try it out and see uh, what we think. All of right. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. I think I love this place. Yeah, this is really good. This that makes me it's, happy. It's, yeah, it's <laughs> it's a little sweet, right? Oh, which yes. is cool. It's a little it sweet. Is. It doesn't have like a strong kick to it. Mm-hmm. You know, when you uh, when you go through a fast food place like a McDonald's or something, and you get their oh, yeah. the cafes, there's always this kind of weird aftertaste. And yeah, mm-hmm. you could tell a place that, that uses good beans. Yeah. Any sweetener added to this? No. So it's, uh, it's, it's got that sweetener just right. without. Yeah. Nice. That is awesome. Mm-hmm. And this place is in Buena Park. Buena, uh, Buena Park, right off of the Beach Boulevard. Okay. So right. border, borderline La Mirada. So guys, you gotta check out Stereoscope. Uh, Beach Boulevard in Buena Park. It's good stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, we really didn't have a lot of topics, uh, topic ideas for today. So I figured what we'd do is maybe just kind of talk about kind of search in general. Mm-hmm. And um, I know we, we kind of get into the details on things sometimes and dig really deep into the different levels of things that we do in local. So maybe we take it back. Take it back a notch like and just, uh, just kind of talk about how, how search works and why businesses uh, need to care about it and be careful. I think um, for somebody new who's got a business and they go to the search engine and they type in plumber in La Mirada and they don't see their listing, I think the first reaction is panic. Right. Like, oh my God, what do I do? And then they get a call from somebody who claims to be from Google mm-hmm. and they say, hi, oh, this is so-and-so calling about your Google listing, right? right? And then they get you know conned into some two or $300 a month thing that they have no idea what's going on. What they don't realize most of the time is that these businesses just hijack their, their business mm-hmm. listings and manage it through their, their platform. And if you leave them, they take all your listings off and you're dead. Right. Um, the reality is there's not a lot you need to do for search. If you have the right simple checklist, we've got a lot at, at our site, weedemancom slash learn. Um, there's a lot of free guides you can download and um, some very simple tips on you know how to do some basic search. Uh, but why does your listing show up there? When, and if you're a local business, why does it show up you know in the, the ad area above the maps? in the map area, now even in an ad in the map, mm-hmm. and why does it show up in the organic results? And, uh, and what's the difference between a search engine and a search site? You know, is, is AOL is AOL a search engine or is it a search site? No one really knows. So an engine, a search engine in itself actually has its own little robot, it's a web crawler that basically follows links on the internet and it consumes all the information that's on there and it databases everything that it finds and it tries to define all that information in the database. So when you perform a search, it reaches into its database and tries to find content that's relevant um, to what you looked for. However, thanks to a lot of you know, bad SEO people, search engine optimization people, um, just putting content on there alone does not work because search engines have realized that people are spamming those pages. So now search engines are looking at where those links were coming from, how they got to the page, and the quality of the page that was linking to that content as part of the criteria. And if there's some really good trustworthy websites that are linking to your website, and your website has the relevant content that they're looking for, Google will try to show you in the search result and see if their users like that content or not. If they don't, if they click back and choose a different website and stay on that website, it might throw a signal to the search engines that maybe you weren't a good result. So you kind of want to think about those three things is the kinds of sites that are linking to you, um, the the relevancy and usefulness of the page itself, and then how users are interacting with your search result in, in Google itself. Um, so, you know, again, Google is a search engine and it powers search sites like AOL and what is it, um, Univision, right? All of these, these uh, portals, even Yahoo, right? People think Yahoo is a search engine and it used to be, but it's really... Yeah, it's powered by. No, anyone? No, no. It's evading. So yeah, yeah, Yahoo search results are powered by Bing. Wow. Okay. So if you look at if you look at a, a Bing search result versus a Yahoo, you'll notice a lot of similarities. Yahoo may still shift a little bit of the results from Bing, right, right, right. but it's the search engine is actually Bing. Yeah. 
So when you run ads in Yahoo, most of the time they are uh, ran through uh, you know, Bing ads. Well, it's I've a little not, bit different on mobile and desktop though. And I've, I noticed, you know, even so even when you're working on your computer, these uh, search engines are fighting to be the one that's the default yeah. on, on your machine. Yeah, and it's it's kind of unethical. They really should just ask you or prompt you when you turn your computer on the first time. It should say, "What search engine are you most comfortable with?" Mm -hmm. But instead, because you know Microsoft kind of owns the market, you know they um, they do their own thing. They try to push you into their right. their product, right. uh, and that's where Cortana comes into play and Cortana Voice. Now Cortana's on your phone. And there's Siri, and there's, mm -hmm. you know, it's funny, Google Assistant doesn't have a name. No. I just realized that. It's just Google Assistant. Yeah, there's, there's Cortana, there's Siri, there's Alexa, Alexa, and then there's Google Assistant. But she's got a cute voice. <laughs> I'm following the voice of yeah. Siri on Twitter. I think oh, yeah? she's, she's got quite a, a, a Oh my god, have you seen that movie, um, Her? Oh, no. that's a great oh movie. Oh my god. Such a good movie. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's, I think we're asking the question of what what's kind of going on right now with search. The basic kind of thinking about search engines, we talked about links and content and so forth. Google being a search engine, Bing being a search engine, AOL and um, Univision and these other sites that have a search box usually powered by another search engine, we call those search sites. Um, but where, where is search going? So we're, we're actually doing a test this Thursday, right? right? So Thursday we're gonna pull some people in and we're gonna ask them on a Google Assistant a series of questions, very vague questions, not um, you need to find a movie showtime, how would you search for it? Instead, it's you're interested in this film, right? And you want to go see it at you know some place near your home. Yeah. Um, how would you search for it? And then uh -huh. we let them use words like movie and so forth. And then we're gonna ask them the same question on Google Home. Right. How would you ask this question when you don't have uh, an actual displayed result from Assistant? So we'll see what they come back with and how much they refine their search to get the answer they want. Um, so it'll be a really interesting study to see how yeah. it comes together. But um, I think it was the local search summit that um, Greg Sterling of the Local Search Association said that by 2020, 50% of all searches will be on voice. Yeah. And I believe it. I, I, I hear my too. I hear my kids, like now they, they don't type anything else. It's an no, emoji, right? right? Even then they're going to have voice emoji, like, like voice poop emoji or something. Well, you can yeah. voice punctuation now too, you know, yeah. add that question mark to the end of, you know, your yep. search. Kids you YouTube see, also is all voice as well. Yeah. Yep. Do you see how excited I got the other day when I, I was trying to find I did a, a, a contest in, in house to see who could come up with the syntax to put the cool little image in the search result. Right. Like somebody actually put up a really cool icon. It was an emoji icon in a meta description and it made that page stand out and that page rank number one. Wow. Like I really want to test that. Mm -hmm. That sounds so cool. How it'll read from an accessibility standpoint, I don't know. Um, so I think in certain markets you got to be careful what type of, of emojis you use because visually impaired people aren't going to be able to understand what you're saying. All right, Steve, what is an emoji? <laughs> for, for those that may not know. Uh, ding. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a silly little icon, or if you uh, if you play the Midway games, it's a, a hat in the shape of a poop, I guess. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of the cartoon world coming into, you know, the, right. the, the yeah. rest yes, of our pictures, text little, world. Little yeah. pictures now, yeah. instead, of, instead of putting words in, people just using emojis. And apparently, I've been doing it wrong. So I thought emojis were just something fun that you put out there, you know, as a fun response like smile or mm -hmm. thumbs up or whatever. But but millennials are actually having conversation in emoji. Yes. They're actually putting phrases in there or by using pictures to represent those phrases and sentences. So they're really writing complete sentences in emoji with three or four images. Yeah. Well, and actually, so. um, some of the autocorrect features on phones now are, are interpreting your text and replacing it with the emoji now, yeah. I've noticed, so. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Soon yeah. enough, we'll be just Something emojiing to, everything. Right. Yeah. Something to pay attention to. The other, the other one other thing I think about with search and search engines in general is, well, two actually. One is that there isn't just Google and Bing. There's Twitter, mm -hmm. there's Facebook, there's YouTube, any any site that you go to with a search box and it's serving results based on its own um, information that it's collected is really its own search engine. And you can use those sites to search Twitter for specific types of users you want to interact with. You can search LinkedIn mm -hmm. based on specific criteria and find uh, an exact audience type. Mm -hmm. And you can pull those audience types into lists like Twitter lists and LinkedIn groups and then you can use the advertising platform to target users you've added to those lists mm. so now you're you're serving search results to users in those platforms 
um, that you've paid for, right. either per click or per impression or whatever, which is really interesting. So I think that's that's something else that's interesting. The other thing is VR. There's AR and VR, this augmented reality where you put on some sort of a glass goggle set and you can see everything that you normally do, but it's overlaid with something digital. I turn my head and then something says, hey, you're uh, you know, 15 feet away from whatever, or you're riding a motorcycle and it gives you a little um, transparent map so that you can see where you're driving and it tells you a stop sign's coming up. The augmented reality is really gonna be interesting, but yeah. the VR, I still have a theory that in the next 10 years, VR is gonna replace desktop at home. Most people are gonna have their VR and their keyboard, right. a little fold out keyboard they put in their pocket, and they just get on there and type away and do whatever they want to on their VR. And when they want to share it or project it to the TV, they pull their VR up, they hit a button, and now they're projecting what they're using on their TV. I think that's where search is going to go. It's got the microphone so that you can do your voice search. People are learning and getting comfortable with voice search. I think that's where um, you know, where search and uh, desktop is going to go. In and I'm sure there years. will be a battle of the generations over it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think I think this whole Internet of Things, right, of, of everything being interconnected. I don't know if, if you already noticed this, but if you're on Chrome, right, your your Chrome history carries with you on your mobile, mm -hmm. on your desktop, and on your work machine. Cool. Um, Microsoft's trying to do that as well with a lot of how it does its OneDrive. Um, everything's trying to stay consistent. So no matter what machine you're on, if you're in your car. Um, using your car computer, your phone, wherever, that the, the history and the, um, everything that you've done all stays consistent. So I think, I think that's, that's going to be really interesting yeah. how, how it plays out. So when, when your fridge starts talking to Alexa to tell you that you're low on milk, <laughs> and then it, you've already pre-programmed it to know that when I'm low on milk, go ahead and add it to my order list and don't, don't order um, anything until you've got a roster of X number of items. So you can have some really cool configurations. One thing I don't like, though, is I don't like that you can't customize Google Home and Alexa and some of these with pre, pre-built responses. Yeah. So that when the kids ask something or they want to do something, that you can cater some of the messaging based on what they ask. And I don't, I don't like that because I love, I love to have some fun with. It. I'd love for Google Assistant to, um, to have its own custom message on how I say good morning. Right, like, hey, good morning, SEO rock star, or something, you know. And I, I love to have more fun with it. And I don't think they've gotten to that point yet. I think this is sort of version one, and they're seeing how people interact with it. They're getting all that feedback to come up with the next version. Sounds like it's in the works, you know, to yeah. be responsive to each voice in the household and give yeah. catered responses to that. Anyway, we'll science go. fiction of yesterday is here today. Exactly. <laughs> Man, we've been rambling for a while. Yeah. yeah. We should wrap up. So yeah, we're uh, we're drinking stereoscope coffee. Yes. Good stuff. Love it. Cappuccino is awesome. The drip was amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cappuccino is good too. Um, not sure what we're going to do next week, but I'm sure we'll have something of a uh, pencil sleeve here. That'll be yeah. fun. Um, cool. You have any ideas for, that for the next uh, next video? If there's questions you have, if there's, if there's anything you want us to discuss, let us know in the comments below. Uh, make sure you subscribe if you, uh, if you like our videos and want to see more of it. And uh, we will see you next week. Thanks for watching. Cheers. 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 Hey.